Joining us to talk about these breakthrough cases is Dr. Sharif Al Nahal, President and CEO of Universal Hospital in Newark. Dr. Al Nahal, thank you so much for being with us on this Thursday. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me. So we know these vaccines have high uh, efficacy rates, right? But they are not perfect. We knew that going into this. So what do the symptoms tend to look like for vaccinated people who happen to get sick compared to unvaccinated people, especially as we look at this highly contagious and strong Delta variant? Well, the good news is that even if you do get COVID-19 after being vaccinated, the symptoms are much less severe than otherwise. And in fact, the hospitalization rates and certainly the death rates are much, much lower for folks who are vaccinated. And so we say this actually every single year mm -hmm. when it comes to the flu vaccine, which are actually less effective right. than COVID-19 vaccines. It is worth it because the disease, if you do get it, is much less severe. Okay, Dr. Elnahal, say you're fully vaccinated. You get COVID, right? What is next then in terms of how you treat isolation? What are the guidelines look like for a vaccinated person compared to an unvaccinated person? Is there a difference from what we saw in the beginning of the pandemic? Well, even though we know that spread is much less likely for somebody who has been vaccinated and may be carrying COVID-19, to be safe, the same guidelines apply. You should stay home for at least 10 days and at least 72 hours after your last fever. And so those guidelines don't change. Got it. We don't know exactly how much less transmissible you are because you are vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So that is the guideline for now. Okay. And Dr. Elnahal, what if you are fully vaccinated and you happen to be just exposed to someone with COVID, but you yourself, you're not showing any symptoms uh, with this Delta variant circulating right now? What do these people need to know? Should they quarantine, possibly get tested? Well, there's never a harm in being tested, even if you are vaccinated. In fact, that is the recommendation. If you suspect for any reason that you have an exposure, and certainly if you have symptoms, you can always get tested. In fact, we want more people to be tested so that we can get ahead of understanding how much Delta variant is contributing to spread of new disease. So do get tested if you are suspicious about it. Okay, you know, we've spoken to you many times along the way about Moderna versus Pfizer versus Johnson & Johnson, right? And people were always saying, oh, you know, which, which vaccine did you get? That was the big question when people would get a vaccine. A new study posted in BioArchive, though, suggests that Johnson & Johnson may not be as effective against what we're calling the Delta variant. It also suggests people who got that one-shot dose could benefit from something like a booster. Should people, doctor, consider getting that booster shot if they only got one shot with the Johnson & Johnson? So I can tell you that all sorts of authorities, including the FDA and the CDC, and certainly the pharmaceutical companies are studying actively the need for a booster. And so what I don't wanna do is get ahead of the CDC or the FDA. But that study certainly is concerning. What we don't have yet is that real world effectiveness study, that comprehensive study that really shows you what the effectiveness is now in the real world okay. for J&J. But if you did get J&J, right, doctor, and you're at home right now and you're saying, oh, I just, I just wanna, take a preemptive measure here. I'm not going to wait for the studies. Can that person, even though they got one shot, go and get another vaccine? Say, I want it. The priority now is to actually vaccinate more individuals. That's a more important public health imperative, not giving boosters. And so I'm not aware of any vaccination clinic uh, that is allowing for boosters right now, because again, we still have to study that. The bigger priority is to still get more shots in arms who have mm. not been vaccinated yet. Doctor, I know, uh, obviously, as you mentioned, research is still underway, but is there any um, outlook right now as to which vaccine is the most compatible with Johnson & Johnson, whether it be Moderna or Pfizer, if you are going to get that booster? I think a booster would likely be one of the mRNA vaccines. Uh, but again, I don't want to speak ahead of right. the FDA and CDC. I think we really have to let the science guide us. And preemptively talking about boosters doesn't do much to help on vaccine confidence. We're still vaccinating people in the community, 150, 200 shots in mobile events. That is the priority right now, and we're really trying to deliver on that at University Hospital. Yeah, and, and I know you guys also mandated your employees to get the vaccine, as now New York City Health and Hospitals did. Where do you stand then on masks versus on no masks, right? So there's this whole debate right now whether you're fully vaccinated or not, whether or not everybody has to wear a mask again. What is your professional opinion here? 
So I agree with the Surgeon General and the CDC Director in saying that local jurisdictions should feel free to make the decision on whether indoor masking is needed, given two variables. Number one, how many people in your community are vaccinated? That's the most important indicator of how bad Delta variant will get in your community. And number two, just looking at the case trends. And so please do follow your local jurisdictions. They're looking at this data closely. They have more information than you and me. Uh, and if there are indoor masking requirements, please do follow them. Understood. Yeah, it seems like it's coming down mm -hmm. to a city by city effort here around the country. Dr. Allen Hall, always appreciate you coming on with your expertise. Appreciate it. Thanks again.